So I've seen a lot of talk about this mindset stuff and it's not, uh, it's not even an arrogant thing. It's just, I've never needed a mindset kind of play. It's just, it is what it is for me. It's called self-efficacy. I've always, I've always had a high level of self-efficacy. I've always believed in myself. All I, all I needed to know was how. And I got to the stage where I didn't even know how to get to how. So I just started doing. And the doing got me to the how. Hi, I'm Anthony Laville, and this is Property Insiders. Well, going back to, if I take it right back, in terms of childhood, I always wanted to be a businessman. There was something about um, being in control and running a business and sort of being a master of my, you know, destiny, making, and not being told, I didn't like being told what to do. But that was one of the main things that appealed to me about business, it was about being a boss. I've probably figured it out from about the age of about 10. I thought I'm going to be a businessman. So we're into, we're into the main uh, entrance area. You can see here there's, there's a set of doors uh, for additional security. But this is the area where you come in, wipe your feet, check your mail. Mm. This is a keyless development. So there's no keys at all required in this building. It's all for your phone and, col and codes. So the mailbox are used, um, we use codes. You're right, mate. And all this is COVID friendly. See if we can get into some of the flats. I always wanted to try and make money. I remember being a kid, uh, being young and trying to sell toys to other kids in the street, just copying somebody else's idea from another kid up the street. And um, I think that's most business. Most businesses, most businesses aren't new. The vast majority, 99%, are, there, no, there are no new ideas generally. It's just another twist on something. So, there was always something that I was doing to try and make a bit of money. I mean, fast forward to uni, I, um, met a landlord who was renting out her properties and I, she had a few, she was a portfolio landlord and uh, we, we had viewed a property with her. She tried to, well she actually s sort of sneakily stuck me her number so we could divert the agent and go directly to her so she could save the, save the agent fee. So it was a bit dodgy on her part and for some reason I thought that was a, a good time for me to tell her that I can find her students, even though she just cut the agent out. Bizarre. Um, and she agreed, and then I started calling up, calling up other landlords, just cold calling. So I'd cold call these landlords and say, hi, I'm Anthony. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm part of the management society at the University of Leicester, and uh, running, running a tenant fine service, are you interested? And invariably they said yes, and then I built up a base of landlords, and then that was it. Started doing, started fighting, started finding tenants for landlords. And by the time I graduated, it wasn't a big business. I mean, pretty much, pretty much made next to no money at uni. But by the time I graduated, I had a client base, and I knew everyone was. There was a bunch of clients that were willing and wanting um, their properties let. So I just did it. Jumped into it full time. And besides that, I was working in as the part-time, so that's the only proper job I've had. In this building we've got um, the flats that are broken down into clusters, and so any flat um, that's beyond a, a set of doors can only be accessed by the people living in that section. How much for this one to go for? Oh, glide's fitted. Oh, sir. Internet. It's warm, isn't it? Cheers. Um, so these, these studios start from 185 a week, including bills, and they, uh, they range to for up to 220 for double occupancy, for the double occupancy rooms. Normally in studios, you just get a fridge with a little ice box, so you get a lot more than what you'd normally get in a studio apartment. We just try to supply a lot more facilities and try and make it stand out and a lot more, make it a lot more pleasant to live in, practical. Well, look at that, I mean, look at, look, look at that. Uh, so during the course of property management, I just wor I worked out that it was the same effort and energy that it took to manage someone else's property as it w was to, you know, manage something I owned. There was, it was better use of my time to manage a building, apartment blocks and smaller apartment buildings opposed to running around different properties. So I worked out quickly that I needed to be the owner. This is, we're gonna go into this common room in a bit actually. And so it's not, it's not finished yet, but you'll see this is the image that we started out with. You know, these are the CGI's that we started off with. And um, 
We were fully let before we booked the building, so students haven't moved in yet. They move in in the next three weeks, but we were fully let um, before we, we PC'd, so before practical completion of the building, so it's done well. One of my lessons that, that I've learned that really, really stand out to me is you get what you consistently ask for. And um, I mean, that's been a game changer for me. It, it, even if it comes down to as, as small of a, as a thing as following up, following up a deal, if I, if I find um, a potential deal that I'm interested in buying, very rarely do I get that deal by um, from the first contact. It usually takes a lot of follow up. So one of my goals is, which I don't really talk about much, but um, I'm hoping to pull off inside the next, I would hope two years is to, um, just to buy a crazy house, a, a, like, a, like a, uh, a mad sort of complex with um, leisure facilities, I mean, pull all that jazz. And just have it as a nice place where I can raise my kids and family can come and visit. I want to. I want to. I want to um, wake up every day and feel like I'm on holiday. That's the feeling I want. Do you know when you wake up on a holiday and you open it? You mean you know when you may have come on the on the on the bus from the airport and you get to your hotel and it's dark, and so you don't get to see the view until the morning and you open the window and you're like, oh shit, I've arrived. Like that's the feeling I want every day. And uh, big deals only is one of my sayings. And by that. I just mean about, you know, if you want to get ahead, it's about pushing your comfort zone and getting yourself on a very, very steep, challenging learning curve um, and getting yourself to a point where you take on that task or take on that challenge and you know that the result, if it comes through, is going to be phenomenal. I've seen comments about, uh, it was more when I did that TikTok post did a TikTok polls recently, it did quite well. I think it's got probably half a million views now on TikTok. And there were some comments about daddy's money or not his building and stuff, but I actually find it quite amusing. Some of it I find quite hilarious. But uh, I think some people sometimes people think you've got to have to start with money. And you don't need to start with money, you've got to start with an idea and a willingness to do the work. If you've got an idea and you keep pursuing it, you know, you get what you ask for, keep keep pushing and do the work and it works out. But money money's not a money's not a deciding fact. In fact there was a in fact there was a comment on my um, on one of my posts about someone stating that the hardest bit is finding the money. And the hardest bit isn't finding the money. Um, my, my response was the hardest bit is actually getting to the point where you need the money, where you can take the money.